Hey garden friends, and welcome to another episode of AJ's Green Thumb. So I'm excited today to bring this episode to you because we'll be potting up some fruit and some flowers. So to start off, I have the two blueberry bushes that I purchased from Home Depot about two weeks ago. I think it's the Elliott series. This one right here is High Bush Blueberry Elliott. Some quick stats. Obviously, it needs full sun. It needs acidic soil. The pH level needs to be between 5 and 5.5 in acidity. If it's not potted and it's out in the ground, it gets to be between 8 to 10 feet tall. So this one gets to be pretty big. However, it's going in a pot. Here's the size of the pot right here. So that will pretty much be its home. Um, I've got a good soil mix today. So it's going to have vermiculite. It's going to have uh, peat moss. It's going to have sand for drainage. And it's going to have some worm castings. So that's the fruit. The flowers that I intend to potting up today, this is their interim home before they're planted out into the landscape. So the delphiniums I have today are pink punch. So with pink punch, that gets to be between three and five feet tall. All right. It's like a magenta pink. Then I've got black eyed angels which is a white flower, but it has black eyes and golden stamens. So it's really pretty. It gets between three or five feet tall. And these are little plugs, by the way. So once I pop it open, you guys will see. This one here is called Cobalt Dream. Cobalt Dreams gets to be between four and six feet tall. This one is called Blue Lace. It's a real soft pastel blue color. And this one gets to be between five and six feet tall. This last one here is called Purple Passion. Okay, Purple Passion gets between five four and five feet tall. And these all have a spread roughly between uh, a foot and a half to two feet. So a few things about delphiniums. Um, you gotta wear gloves when you're handling them because they are uh, mildly toxic, okay? You wanna just be cautious when you're handling them. You don't want to rub your eyes and touch your face and stuff like that because it can cause uh, a mild irritation. The soil needs to be pretty fertile, medium moisture, but well drained. The thing about delphinium, since they get so tall and their stalks are so narrow, you got to make sure you go in there and stake it prior to planting it out in the landscape. Good thing to know about delphiniums, once the first flush of blooms are spent, you can cut them back and then it will rebloom later on in the season. Good thing about delphiniums, they're not fussy about their soil type. It can be acidic, it can be neutral, or it can be on the alkaline side. So what I have here is from the new Millennium series. So the plus about the Millennium series is that they're more cold hardy and they're more heat tolerant. But me in zone seven, which is the highest zone that you can have delphiniums, um, I'll still go ahead and put them in part, shade or morning sun. I'll put them over in the carport garden. So I'm gonna go ahead and pot them up in these three quart containers and like most of you already know, I like to save my containers anytime I purchase plants. So I have a number of these three quart containers here. 
So I'll be needing five. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and create my soil mix. So I got my potting mix. And a little bit of that, a little perlite. A little bit of worm castings. A little bit of vermiculite. It aids in aeration and drainage in pot and mixes. And to assist with that drainage, we put a little sand. Okay, now I got my mix for my blueberries. Got enough peat moss in here for acidity and plenty of vermiculite and sand with generous rich compost and pot and mix. All good ingredients for uh, blueberries because they're heavy feeders. So blueberries ripen mid-season, and for us up here in zone 7A, that would be around um, early August, late July, early August is kind of like mid-season for us. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put some of this soil at the bottom. See, now y'all know what type of tub this really is for. It's for beer. And here's my bottle opener that just fell off. Too funny. All right. mm. This holly tone got a little wet. Listen, guys, if you've got fertilizer that sat there and perhaps gotten wet, you know, you pop the bag open and you take a whiff and that thing nearly knocks you off your feet, don't use it. Open a fresh bag. That's the case here. Okay, shout out to Anthony from July's Aquatics and Gardening. I got some Dr. Earth here. Ratios 552. So I'm feeling kind of stingy right now. I don't want to open up a new bag of Hollytone. So I'll just go ahead and use fruit tree fertilizer right now from Dr. Earth. I'll put the link down below. And later on in the season, I'll go ahead and use some Hollytone on the soil surface to fertilize the plant. What you want to do as you're preparing your mix, you want to go ahead and put some of that fertilizer in the mix. All of the instructions are on the packaging. So there should be no question as to how to apply it. So the ingredients in this Dr. Earth's fruit and tree fertilizer are feather meal, fish bone meal, bone meal, alfalfa meal, potassium sulfate, kelp meal, rock phosphate, and kelp flour. So it's some pretty good stuff in here. Um, it has 5% total nitrogen. 5% is water insoluble nitrogen. The phosphate is 5%. 
and the potash or the potassium is 2%. It also contains some non-plant food ingredients like mycorrhizae, a whole list of the different types. And it also contains 9% humic acids, which is good stuff. All right. Look at all of that fertilizer they put in there. Goodness. All right, so we'll tease these roots just slightly. So they're all vigorous and healthy, as you can see. All right, guys. So this high bush Elliott blueberry tree has been planted. It's good to go. So I'm gonna top dress it with some gravel and then probably in six weeks, I'll go ahead and put some holly tone on top for extra fertilization to give it that extra ump. Um, these blueberries, they harvest kind of like mid to late season. Well, for zone 7A that is. So we're talking around late July, early August, we'll get a nice harvest out of this. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this top dressing on this blueberry plant and the same on the other and thoroughly water it in. gravel as a top dress a lot because it displaces the water properly and it prevents a lot of splashback onto the leaves thereby preventing any type of uh, fungal diseases or you know infection that could come from the soil Drench this bad boy. And actually this position is perfect because it'll produce a really nice screen from the neighbors. Not that I don't like my neighbors. Hey neighbor, but it's a great screen for privacy. So over here are the delphiniums. Really wasn't too much about potting them up. I mean, like I said, they were plugs. So actually I think they're pretty pathetic, but here's one, it's called Purple Passion. Put, this, put the picture up on the screen for you. Here are the leaf textures. All right, that's the only one that's really a, a solid plant. So you got cobalt dreams, black eyed angels, blue lace, purple passion, and pink punch. All right, folks. Well, thanks for hanging with me. This will wrap up this episode of planting the blueberries and the delphinium plants you see behind me. Um, I'll keep you guys abreast on the progress and the harvest of the blueberry because I love me some blueberries, especially for breakfast. I like to put them in my oatmeal. All right, take care. See you in the next episode. AJ's Green Thumb.